In this section, we have already implemented authentication and authorization for our application. So we already have login and sign up functionality in place. And we are also protecting some of our routes from unauthorized access. Now in this lecture and in next few lectures, we are going to talk about security best practices. So we are going to discuss about different types of attacks which an attacker can make on our application and how to prevent them. And in this lecture, we are going to learn how to prevent cross-site scripting attack on our application. So currently what we are doing is, whenever the user signs up or logs in, we are sending this JSON web token with the response. Now, currently what we are doing is, we are testing our API using Postman. And for testing the protected routes, we are simply copying the JSON web token. And what we are doing is, we are going to this authorization tab and there we are specifying the token value. So this is okay when we are working with Postman, but we have created this API which we are going to use from our web application and the web application will run in a browser. So in general, what we do is once we receive the response and in the response, when we have the JSON web token, we store it somewhere and every time we send a request to a protected route, we read that JSON web token from the stored location and send it with the request. And in general, we store the JSON web token in browser's local storage. Now, storing the JSON web token in the browser's local storage is not secure. Because an attacker can read that JSON web token from your local storage by using cross-site scripting attack. So, cross-site scripting, it is a type of attack where the attacker tries to inject scripts into our web page to run some malicious code. On the client, this is especially dangerous because it allows the attacker to read the local storage. And this is the reason we should never store the JSON web token in the local storage. Instead, it should be stored in the HTTP only cookie. And this makes sure that the browser can only receive and send the cookie, but cannot access or modify it in any way. Okay, so for security reasons, a JSON web token should be stored in an HTTP only cookie. And we are going to learn how to do that in this lecture. So just to make sure you understand the concept, an attacker can make a cross-site scripting attack on the client, which allows the attacker to read the browser's local storage. And if the application is storing the JSON web token in the browser's local storage, the attacker will be able to read it. So instead of storing the JSON web token in the browser's local storage, we should always send and receive it using HTTP cookie. Because even if the attacker runs a script in the browser, the browsers do not have access to HTTP cookies. So it cannot read or modify the HTTP cookie. That's why we should always send and receive JSON web token through HTTP cookies. Let's learn how we can do that. So let's go to our authcontroller.js. And there, if I scroll up in one of the previous lectures, we created this create send response function and we are calling this function in order to send a response and with that response we are sending the json web token currently this json web token is being sent with the response now in order to use this json web token from the client side the application has to store this token somewhere as i mentioned earlier generally we store it in the browser's local storage but here we are not going to do it we are going to send and receive json web token through HTTP cookie. So we want to send the JSON web token as a cookie to the client. Now a cookie is basically a small piece of text that a server can send to the client. Then when the client receives the cookie, it will automatically store it and it will automatically send it back along with all the future requests that we make from that client to the same server. Currently we are testing our API using Postman. So sending and receiving JSON web token in cookies is not that important. But later, when we will create a dynamic web application from where we will make requests to the same API from the browser, at that time it is important that the browser sends back the token automatically for each request. So we will talk more about cookies at that time because then it will be easy to understand how cookies work. In this lecture, let's simply focus on learning how to create and send a cookie with the response. Now in order to create a cookie on the response, we have a method called cookie and to this we need to pass two arguments the first argument will be a string value so for example we can name it anything here i'm simply going to call it as jwt 
and the second argument will be the value for that string as i mentioned earlier a cookie is nothing but a small piece of text so here this jwt it is that text and for this we need to specify a value and to this we want to assign the value which is stored inside this token variable so this token variable is basically storing the json web token and that we want to assign to this text now we also need to pass an optional third argument here and there we can specify some options for example when this cookie will expire for that we can specify the expires property and to this we need to specify a value in milliseconds so let's say we want this json web token to expire in maybe next five days okay so a json web token will be valid only for five days then it should expire or what we can also do is earlier we have set the expiry date for the json web token as 10 days i think so let's go to our config.inv and there we are specifying the login expires and here we are specifying it in milliseconds so let me go ahead and let me assign this value itself here okay or we can also use that environment variable so here we can say process dot inv dot and the name of the environment variable is login expires so let's use this one all right then we can also specify secure and here we are going to set it to true so when we set this secure to true it will make sure that the cookie is only sent on a secure http that is when we are using the https connection okay and then we also need to specify another property which is http only and this also we are going to set it to true so this http only will make sure that the cookie cannot be accessed or modified in any way by the browser and this is important to prevent any cross-site scripting attack because we don't want any script to read this cookie and for that we need to make sure that this http only is set to true so this will restrict browsers from accessing or modifying the cookie and this is how we create and send a cookie so we are creating this cookie on this response so whenever the response will be sent with that response this cookie will also get sent now currently we cannot test this functionality because we have set this secure to true right that means in order to test this we will have to send a request on https protocol and not http but currently we can only make http protocol from postman so since we are not using https and we have set secure to true the cookie will not be created and not be sent to the client so what we need to do is we only want to set secure property to true when the application is running in the production mode for the development we want to test the functionality so we will just ignore this option so what i will do is here i will create a new variable i'll simply call it as options and to this let's go ahead and let's assign this object okay and from there let's remove this secure to true and let's pass this options here this options object all right now before we set this cookie we will also check if the application is running in production mode or not if the application is running in production mode in that case on this option we will also add the secure to true so for that here let's simply write an if statement and there let's check if process dot inv dot node underscore env okay so if the environment if it is production then we want to set options dot secure to true so in this case what will happen is since in this options object we don't have any secure property a new property called secure will be created for this options object and there it will be set with this value true but if the environment is not production if it is development in that case in this options object we will not have any secure property okay with this let's save the changes let's go to postman and let's go to this sign up request and let's say we want to create a new user so i'm going to call this user as test2 and email also i'll set it to test2 let's keep the password as test1234 and confirm password also as 
test one two three four. So earlier, if you remember, when we were sending the sign up request, this cookies was empty. So as you can see, previously when we sent the sign up request, this cookies is empty. Now let's send the request again to create this test two user. And here it says option expires is invalid. That's because let's go to VS Code. And here the property name is not expires, it is max age. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go back to Postman. And now let's try to create this user again by setting this post request. And now you can see we have this success message and you'll also see that in this cookies tab we have a cookie called jwt which is storing this json web token as its value then here you can also see the host the path and when this will expire so here you can see that this jwt it will expire on may 2024 okay http only is set to true and secure is false because currently we are running the application in the development mode when we will run the application in production mode at that time this secure will be true okay so now the json web token is being sent with http cookie and this will allow us to prevent any cross-site scripting attack which will try to read the json web token all right now before i wrap up this lecture i have noticed a bug here so if I scroll down, you will notice that when we are getting the user data, in the user data, we are also getting the password. And we should not be getting the password of the user in the response. So this we need to fix. But if we go to this get all user API, let's check. You will notice that there we are not receiving the password. Let me also save this request. Yeah, I will simply call it as get all user and we want to save it in users folder okay so when we are getting all the users at that time we are not getting the password but when we are making a sign up request at that time in the response we are also getting the password now for get all users we are not getting the password because in the schema if i go to user schema there you will notice that for password we have set the select to false that's why in the response, we are not getting the password when we are getting all the users. But here, when we are making the sign up request, it is going to create that user and it is going to return us that user. And we are storing it inside this new user variable. So when it is going to return us that user, at that time, it will also store the password of that user. So here, what we will simply do is before sending the response, we will set user dot password to undefined now here we are simply setting it in the code we are not going to save this user where we have set the password to undefined we will not save this user but we have just set its password to undefined so now when we are sending this user object at that time the password field will not be present okay but we are not saving it in the database so in the database we will still have password let's save the changes here and let's go to postman and now let's again create a new user maybe test3 and email address is test3 at gmail.com let's send a request and now let's see you will notice that now for the user we don't have the password field okay all right so this is all from this lecture in this lecture, we learned how to send and receive JSON web token with HTTP cookies. And this allows us to prevent cross-site scripting attacks from reading the JSON web token. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.